welcome viewers to the 10th lecture of the of the course spur and helical gear cutting and in this 10th lecture we will be solving some numerical problems on the subjects that we have covered up till now so let's move on directly to those subjects first comes the question of differential indexing a gear has to be cut with 69 teeth the available hole circles are okay some some hole circles that means on the index plate we are having some holes present and the hole circles which are available they are put here that's fine so the thing to be noticed is that the highest value is 66 okay and the set of gears which are available they are 100, 90, 80, etcetera, etcetera. Now, what are we supposed to do with these gears? If a change gear ratio is to be developed by setting up a gearbox between, you know, the worm gear and the index plate, as is generally the case in differential indexing, then we can make use of these gears. Okay, so this is the statement of the problem. I have to cut a gear with 69 teeth available hole circles are provided and the set of gears change gears they are also provided now let's see how we can solve this problem first of all if 69 teeth are to be cut we can first of all move by the method of virtual hole circle now what's that we say that 69 teeth are to be cut and we don't have some hole circle which is very close to it say 70 hole circle so we assume that 70 hole circle is present now why are we doing that because in the, in that case the gear ratio becomes very simple but if you don't have something how can you proceed with the calculations because many times it is seen that the fractions which will be uh, you know appearing in the calculations they can be realized by other gear uh, boxes or other hole circles as well so, let us proceed, frame the method and see whether it is giving acceptable answers. So, the gear ratio, how do we calculate the gear ratio for that? Please have a look at the paper. What we generally do just to remind you is this, that we have this dividing head. On the dividing head, we have this particular, uh, you know, index crank sticking out. This is the index plate and this gets connected to the worm, this one to the worm gear, worm gear feeds the work piece that is your blank on this side, on this side we have those gears etcetera, etcetera. This one connects up through a bevel gear to the index plate. The drawing hopefully is clear. I, I can I can show you another drawing, but you will find in the previous lectures we have already discussed it. So, index crank rotating moves right through, rotates the worm, rotates the worm gear and that rotates the job and the worm gear feeds back this particular data, I mean uh, uh, its rotation to this change gears and they connect up this part is not very clear, but they connect up to the index plate, index plate rotates. Now, this index plate when it is rotating, it's, it creates a differential motion be between the rotating crank and the rotating index plate. This is what we are interested in and how does it occur here? This is the figure. In the figure, this is the existing first hole, existing second hole and therefore, we can say that this distance must be, this distance must be 1 by 70. This is what is physically provided to you, first hole, second hole, third hole, fourth hole like that. Now, if 1 by 69, uh, sorry, if 69 hole circle is not there, had it been there, from the first hole, the second hole would have been slightly away here and therefore, 
as per method of differential indexing by like moving the crank from here towards this side. Okay. This hole that means this hole which is on the plate, the plate should travel so that this hole comes here and therefore, the movement on the plate required is this one. How much is this? This must be 1 by 69 minus 1 by 70. So, now we move from the worm, I move from the index crank this way that the movement that I am ultimately providing therefore, by index crank must be 1 by 69. I am travelling right up to this point, plate is travelling from here to here. So, 1 by 69 into so, 1 by 16 and rotation has been given, it goes here and suffers a reduction of 1 by 40, gets multiplied by u, rotates the index plate, index plate is rotating by this much amount 1 by 69 minus 1 by 70. So, that basically we have derived the equation once again, <coughs> 69 will cancel out and we will have 40 by 70. This will yield a numerator of 1, denominator 69 will cancel out and 70 will remain. So, the change gear has to be 40 by 70, having a virtual whole circle of 70 holes, it is not there. This is the gear ratio connected up with this particular whole circle. Now, this means that the gear ratio is basically 4 by 7. So, if you can provide a gear ratio of 4 by 7 at this point, the, the index plate will have the required motion for indexing for a 70 hole circle. This is understood. For a 70 hole circle, it will have exactly the motion required if you put here 4 by 7. So, how much is the movement of the crank which is required? As we know the magic number is 40, let me choose a different piece of paper. As we know the magic number is 40 by z okay. and in differential indexing what happens? The z required is not there, so move by 40 by z available and the machine will ad adjust through the mechanisms that change here and all those things, this will be converted to. 40 by z available gets converted to 40 by z required. That is the function of that gearbox and all those things. Okay. So, in this case how much do we have to rotate the crank? We have to rotate the crank by 40 by 70. That means, had you not had a 70 hole circle, but a 7 hole circle you would have to would have had to rotate the uh, crank by 4 parts out of 7 parts, for out of 1 rotation, 4 7th of a rotation would have had to be done. So, in that case we understand that all that virtual uh, 70 hole circle etcetera that is not important, but what is important is this ratio, this rotational amount has to be provided that is all. You, you might not have a 70 hole circle, it does not really matter, rotational ratio is a rotational amount is this, 4 7th of a rotation has to be provided by whatever means. So, that means that if I have a 7 hole circle or any multiple of it, then that will do and we look up that particular table. Let us have a quick look at this table. Yeah, we have multiples of 7, 14, uh, 49 is there, 42 is there, Okay, all sorts of multiples of 7 they are present. So, coming back what we do is sorry coming back what we do is we multiply by 7 the numerator and denominator and we come up with 7 4s are 28, 7 7s are 49. On the 49 hole circle if you move by 28 holes that will suffice you need not have 70 hole circle. But mathematically we see the only restriction is 4 by 7th of a rotation has to be provided and the mecha differential mechanism will take care of everything else. Okay. So, this is the answer 28 holes on the 49 hole circle have to be moved through and you will be cutting 69 teeth. 
the change gear ratio has to be 4 by 7. That is it. If you do these two things, your problem is solved. Next, uh, let us take a corollary. Okay. If, you, if, you, if you have this problem on the same machine, how would you be cutting 71 whole circle? The 71 whole circle can be cut with this same setup, only an extra pinion would be required to change the direction of rotation instead of you know uh, the rotations taking place in the same direction, crank rotation and plate rotation taking place in the same direction, crank rotation and plate rotation will be opposing each other if you cut 71 whole circle, other things will be remaining the same. Okay. So, this is one problem in differential indexing, let us move to yet another problem. Say number of teeth to be cut is 83 and nearest virtual whole circle which is provided, okay, I am saying please use 86 whole circle. So, this time I am not leaving it to you where you assume 70 whole circle, but this time we are providing please assume a virtual whole circle of 86 and solve the problem. Okay. So, the change gears, so this time the change gears we can directly apply the formula instead of deriving it u is equal to 40 into n required minus minus n available which is 83 minus sorry 86 minus 83 is 3 divided by available whole circle 86. Okay. So, this is 40 by 86 into 3. From the change gears available, you will find that you can use 72 by 24. Yeah, 4 twos are, uh, 3 fours are 12 and 3 twos are 6, 7. Okay. This will give you 3. So, these change gears in the, in, in the gear box, they will provide you with the required particular gear ratio. And what about the actual rotation of the crank? Once again, 40 by z is the magic number. 40 by z available must be equal to 40 by 86. That means, we can cut it at least once and we can get 20 by 43. That means, if you have a 43 hole circle, in that case, if you move by 20 holes, that will also suffice. Okay? That will also suffice. So, if you use, so coming back to here, if you use a 43 hole circle, move by 20 holes on that, that will suffice. But why not use 86? Because it is mentioned already, 86 does not exist. So, how do I know 43 exists? 43 has to exist, otherwise this problem cannot be solved. Okay? So, I am sorry, in the statement of the problem, we should have said that 43 hole circle is existing and solves the problem by assuming 86 is the nearest virtual hole available. Okay. Sorry, but that would have made it a fully you know foolproof problem. Okay. So, let us try out some problems of you know uh, this type which will uh, which will be uh, helping you to uh, apply logic to find out the answers to several multiple choice questions. The following is not a mechanism for transferring one rotary motion to another rotary motion, bevel gear pair, nut and screw, chain and sprocket, worm and worm wheel. So, does the bevel gear pair transfer one rotary motion to another? Yes, it does. So, this is not the answer. Nut and screw. Nut and screw, yes, provided the screw is uh, you know uh, restricted from translation and nut is restricted from rotation, transfer from uh, rotary motion to linear motion takes place. So, this mechanism is not for transferring rotary motion to rotary motion. You might say that if I lock the nut with the screw, that means 
the screw is rotating on top of that the nut is mounted therefore nut is also rotating. So, we have to add another uh, statement to the question that nut is restricted from rotation with the screw, but that will be a giveaway you are already telling the answer. Anyway, let us go through the other options chain and sprocket chain and sprocket is basically used for rotary motion to rotary motion, because uh, the power ultimately transfer gets transferred from sprocket to sprocket. But suppose I uh, argue this way that at least from the chain to the sprocket since it is mentioned as the as as the pair chain to the sprocket translation to a uh, rotation to translation is taking place sorry sprocket to chain Tra rotation to translation is taking place. So, that way this will also qualify strictly speaking in a chain sprocket mechanism. So, when the sprocket is rotating the chain is undergoing linear motion. Okay. So, C also qualifies worm and worm wheel if the worm rotates the worm wheel rotates. So, this is for rotary to rotary. So, here if we uh, uh, look at the question answers strictly from a logical point of view nut and screw qualifies chain and sprocket qualifies. In case of milling of a straight spur gear with 31 teeth differential indexing is employed a 33 hole circle on index plate is used for the purpose the number of rotations to be given to index crank is. So, this is now very simple for you people because you have already done two problems. So, here we will simply apply 40 by z into that means 40 by z available into uh, just a moment what is asked for the number of rotations to be given to index crank what is the number of rotations mind you there will be one question in which you will be asking for the gear ratio and another question where you will be asked for the number of rotations of the crank. So, in this case let us find out what is the number of rotations of the index crank. If the if the rotations of the index crank they are taking place as let us write it down 40 by z. Okay. What is the z available? The z available is 40 by 33, 40 by 33 and we are cutting 31 teeth. So, if we give if we provide 40 by 33 amount of motion ultimately it will be converted to 40 by 31. Okay. How is this made possible? Because ultimately if we are providing 1 by 33rd of a rotation it is getting converted to 1 by 31st of a rotation. So, 40 by 33 will be getting converted to 40 by 31. So, the answer should be 40 by 31 B. Here I should mention that if gearbox had been asked for gearbox, it would have had this particular answer 40 by n available into n n 1 minus n 2 n that would give us In that case C would have been correct, but gearbox has not been asked for and mind you there is a sign which is appearing here which can change indicating direction of rotation. We will come to that in some problem which is given later on. Okay. So, the answer to this is simply 40 by 33.
40 by 33 sorry b is not the answer i made a mistake 40 by 33 is e 40 by 33 is e a 40 teeth straight spur gear is to be milled the outer diameter is 160 millimeters the module of the gear tooth is so how do we solve this question we say that the outer diameter of the gear blank in case of straight spur gear is equal to we will write it down here diameter out equal to dp plus 2 module equal to m into z plus 2 m equal to we have 40 teeth. So, f, uh, let the module be m, m into 40 plus twice m and this is given to be 168. Okay. So, 42 m is equal to 168 which means m is equal to 4. Okay. So, m is equal to 4. In gear milling, rpm of the cutter depends on number of teeth of the cutter, material of the cutter only, cutting velocity only and none of these. So, let us look at them one by one. In gear milling, rpm of the cutter depends on the number of teeth of the cutter why should it there is no reason because of which it should depend cutting speed which is uh, sorry rpm which it is developing it should be related to the cutting speed not the number of teeth so it depends upon the material of the cutter only it depends on the material of the cutter but it does not depend upon it only there are other factors also on which it will depend cutting velocity only. Now, if the cutting velocity is uh, mentioned for the cutter, okay, does that define the rpm? No, cutting speed is defined by you know defined as pi d n by uh, pi d n by 60, where d is the diameter of the cutter and n is the rpm. So, if velocity is equal to diameter into rpm, so velocity depends sorry rpm depends both upon the cutting velocity as well as upon the diameter. So, rpm depends both on cutting velocity as well as on its diameter. So, not it does not depend upon cutting velocity only. So, here we have the answer to be none of these. It does not depend. It, it does not depend upon number of teeth. It does not depend upon material of the cutter only. It does not depend upon the cutting cutting velocity only. Therefore, the answer is none of these. For milling 71 teeth gear, available number of holes on the index plate are 35, 45, 55, 65. If 35 hole circle is used for indexing change gear ratio. Now, we are asking for change gear ratio. So, we have to be very alert. Change gear ratio for differential indexing without considering sign for the time being we are not bothered about the sign is. So, some options are given. So, let us quickly apply the uh, equation for gear box. So, gear box equal to ratio 40 by available number of holes 40 by available number of holes is uh, just a moment we will uh, let me let me write down the problem on a fresh piece of paper 71 teeth okay holes available 35 45 55 65 35 holes adapted and with this how much should be the change gear ratio so let's take a virtual 
number of holes 70. Immediately we can understand that if 70 holes are present, the gearbox ratio becomes 40 by 70, that is it, 40 by 70, 4 by 7. So, let us see whether that answer is there, 4 by 7. Uh, you might say that what about that virtual thing that has been mentioned here? It means that if I can uh, apply this particular gear ratio and work with the 70 hole circle, we have nothing to worry about. But then you will be, say, you'll be saying that 70 hole circle is not there. But if the with the whole circle, our main headache is that whether I can execute the required amount of rotation on that whole circle. So, how much is the amount of rotation? The amount of rotation is, if we look at the piece of paper, amount of rotation must be equal to 40 by 70, 40 by magic number that is converted to 40 by 71. So, if it is 40 by 70, it is as good as 20 holes on the 35 hole circle. So, we have nothing to worry about. We will be having this gear ratio, it will be taking care of the conversion and the amount of rotation which is 40 by 70, it can as well be, be obtained by 20 by 35. It is giving going to give rise to the same uh, fractional movement. Okay. So, both these things are satisfied and therefore, the answer should be 4 by 7. So, let us go back to the problem and have a look at the options. The change gear ratio for differential indexing is 1 by 40, 7 by 4, 3 by 40, 4 by 7. So, D is the correct answer, the gear ratio 4 by 7. Going back, I mean uh, taking the next problem, let us see what it says. In order to cut 73 teeth, differential indexing is used to rotate the part. The change gear ratio for this is 5 by 9, but if the change gears get disengaged and do not work during indexing, the number of graduations marked would be, uh, just a moment, I am sorry, the last line should be the number of teeth cut would be. So, let, let me read out the problem once again. In order to cut 73 teeth, differential indexing is used. The change gear ratio is 5 by 9. So, you have put a particular change gear ratio. From this, we can back calculate what is the number of holes that you are employing. But if the change gears get disengaged, the number of teeth that would be cut is, so let us solve this problem. If you look at this piece of paper, so we write here z is equal to 73 teeth. Okay gear ratio equal to 5 by 9 that must be equal to 40 by n available into n required minus n available. Let me write a difference because we are not uh, considering the sign at this moment. So, if this is 5 by 9, we can uh, we can have right. If we take assuming, let us try the solution assuming n a to be 72, okay, then gear ratio comes out to be 40 by 72 into 1 equal to this cancels out, how many times can it cancel? By 8, 8 fives are 40 and 9 eights are 72, that is it. So, it must be working with a, a whole circle or a virtual whole circle of 72, but what is the problem? Problem is the gears suddenly get disengaged and when the operator goes on using the setup, 
he is basically not doing differential indexing, but he is doing simple indexing with 72 whole circle. And therefore, the number of teeth which are being cut, they are defined by 40 by 72. This is the number of teeth which are being cut if it gets disengaged from differential indexing. So, 72 teeth will be cut in that case. Okay. Achha, one question, one question, what about 74? Can 74 be an answer? Let us see. In that case, the gear ratio, uh, if you come to the piece of paper once again, gear ratio with 74, how much is it? 40 into 74 difference 73 and 74. Oh, 74 is going to, you know, drive the solution somewhere else. 40 by 74 is not equal to 5 by 9. So, we have this to be the answer is 72 is the correct answer. Coming to the next problem, what should be the cutter number for cutting 73 teeth to module 15 degree helix angle gear? So, what is the information that is provided? First of all, once again the statement of the problem is what should be the cutter number for cutting 73 teeth to module 15 degree helix angle gear teeth by milling. Obviously, because some milling cutter numbers are given. What is that information? Cutter number 1 cuts from 135 teeth to the rack. Cutter number 2 from 55 to 134 teeth. Cutter number 3, 35 to 54 teeth. Number 4, 26 to 34 teeth. Number 5, 21 to 25 teeth, number 6, etc. Now, what is basically the thing that we notice? We find that for small number of teeth, the num cutter numbers are rapidly changing. As the numbers of teeth becomes uh, become uh, you know larger and larger, the tooth profile becomes more and more flat, and ultimately we find that uh, you know the cutter numbers can handle huge numbers of teeth single handedly cutter number 2 for example can handle 55 to 134 teeth so with this idea in mind let us proceed first of all our first uh, thing that we notice in the calculations is that for spur gears, what should be the cutter number? The cutter number should be 2. Why? Because if we go back, if we are cutting 73 teeth, it falls in this particular category, 55 to 134 teeth and cutter number 2 should be used. That is good. So, for helical gear, the number for selection of teeth, the number of teeth for selection should be given by n by cos cube alpha or z by cos cube alpha. So, alpha is given to be 15 degrees and we do this calculation that number of teeth divided by cos cube alpha is equal to 81. So, 81 means that it is still cutter number 2, it is still cutter number 2. Why? Because the cutter number 2 can handle from 55 to 134 teeth. So, if you go for uh, looking for any you know change in cutter number, most of the cases where you have a small cutter number, you will notice that in that case, the there, there is the, there is frequent chance of the cutter number getting changed, cutter number getting changed. Okay. So, 25 teeth, if you have 25 teeth with helix angle 15 degrees, you are surely going to have a change. I have not included this calculation, but you can do it very simply. That is the effective number of teeth for selection of the cutter will be 
25 divided by cos cube 15 okay cos cube 15 degrees that will give you the number of teeth which will be used for selection of the cutter okay thank you